Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome to part four in our series here on Conva.js. In this video, I want to talk about animation. Okay, now there are three kinds of animation. There's drag animation, which we've seen, and there's tween animation and custom animation. In this video, let's talk about tween animation. A tween animation is where you have a shape on the, on the canvas and you want to animate some property. For example, maybe we have the, a star, okay, and we, we want to animate it along the x-axis horizontally. We would tween the x property. And we have a start value for x and an end value and then a duration. And our star will make the journey across the canvas left to right. Uh, is that right to left, left to right? Uh, in that, uh, over that duration. So let's see how we do that. Okay, so in our code here, as usual, naturally we have our stage, of course, a layer added to the stage, a star, same star from the last uh, tutorial, and now we create a new tween. Okay, that's the syntax. We're creating a new tween, and the animation itself, the tween animation itself, gets its own variable here. I'm just calling it tween, small t tween, setting that equal to a new conva.tween, and as so many things in Conva do, we're going to pass in one parameter, an object, with typically a minimum of three uh, key value pairs here, right? Node is the shape that we're animating. In this case, we're going to be animating the star. Each tween animates exactly one object. So if you have multiple objects and you want to tween them all, maybe you have a bunch of stars and you want them all to slide, you know, from one side to the other, then uh, you're going to have to create multiple tweens. There's no getting around that. Duration is the duration in seconds, not milliseconds, so be careful about that. It's kind of unfortunate. I wish they were in milliseconds. Everything else in JavaScript is in milliseconds. The people at Conver are trying to help us out by making it seconds, and they're not. It's confusing. And finally, any and all properties that we want to transition over those two seconds, in this case, it's only the X property and it's two, a destination of 420. We don't have to specify the beginning value because Convo will go to the shape and find its beginning value. Now, of course, we've saved that, right? Uh, however, the tween is not executed, has it? So we can execute the tween by calling the play method on it like this. And when we do, and we save and refresh, Okay, so when we execute the tween here, we save and refresh, and okay, it slides across the screen just as we would expect. Very nice. Now, in this case, we're transitioning only the X property, but we can do multiple properties. Let's also add an opacity of uh, 0 0.1. Okay, see what happens, save and refresh, and it does just what you think, okay? Tweens those two properties, okay? Let's also do a rotation of 360 degrees. Again, do that, save and refresh. And now it rolls across the screen. Isn't that nice? Look at that. And I'm going to, let's see, oh, you know what? We can be artistic about this and make it sort of roll backwards. Here we are. All right. Ooh, and that is nothing if not artistic, isn't it? And we're all about being artistic here. Very nice. Now, it's common to want to do something when uh, the tween has finished, has run its course, and those two seconds are up. It's common to want to do something. So let's set the on finish uh, sort of a callback to a function. And I'm going to use a fat arrow function here, and we'll just log something out. Finish to do that, save and refresh, and it does indeed work. Okay, it says finished. All right, just as we'd expect. Now, of course, the uh, it, it's silly to log something out. Let's play with the tween a little bit. It turns out that you can do different things with the tween. You can not only play it, we can also reverse it. How's that? Okay, so we're going to say tween.reverse like that, save and refresh. And now when we do that, it bounces back just as you'd expect. Okay, there we go. And it stops at the end. Quick word on this. You'll notice that on the return trip, right, that on finish property uh, is not called, is it? Okay. And that's because this reverse method here, excuse me, I'm sorry, the onFinish method, there we go, only fires when it crosses the finish line, so to speak. On the return trip, of course, right, it's starting on this end of, this, of the stage and moving over here and then bouncing back like this. It's winding up back at the starting point. It's not crossing the finish line on the return trip. If you want to have the star sort of go back and forth like this, bounce back and forth, 
you could certainly do that. One way would be to use a set timeout in there somehow, okay, well, with a, a sort of a period of 2,000 milliseconds. Another better way, my friends, is to do something that I discovered in the documentation, which is buried deep in the documentation, the Conva documentation, and I, I, I forgot even where I found it, but it turns out that there is a yo-yo property which you can set to true. And when we do that, save and refresh, and now we see, we should see in just a moment, yeah, there we go, it bounces back and forth. Look at that, just as you'd expect. I don't know why they don't include this in the higher level documentation. I'm, part of me wonders if it's buggy or something, sort of still in development, but I, I really don't know, I couldn't tell you. But in any case, it's there, so if you'd like to use it, use it at your own risk. All right, and that's really about it, except, wait a second, there's one more thing I wanna do here. Uh, right now, the star, okay, is moving at a constant speed. It's, it's immediately beginning at a certain speed and going ee across the canvas like this and stopping quite suddenly. Maybe we wanna accelerate into this tween or, or decelerate down and slow down to a stop. We can do that by setting the easing property to Conva, capital K, Conva, dot easing, zoo. Notice the S here, I always forget the S, so be careful of that. And for example, ease out, how's that? Okay, now watch what happens, watch the behavior, my friends. You'll notice that it slows down at the end, doesn't it? Let me see, okay, do that again, and it slows down at the end. The opposite, of course, would be ease in. Here it'll start out slow and accelerate, here we go accelerating to a fast, okay, there we go. And the combination also works, by the way. Look at this. There we see that it started out very slowly, accelerated up and then decelerated back down. So it's slow at the beginning, slow at the end, and very, very, very fast toward the middle. The overall duration is still two seconds, however, so be aware of that. Okay, and that's really, my friends, that's all there is to say about tween animation, except for one thing. I want to show you a shortcut. Yeah, that's right. Turns out that this business of creating a new tween instance and then calling the play method on the tween can be a little bit, what's the word, clumsy, a little bit awkward, okay? There is a shorthand syntax, which I use probably 80% of the time. It looks like this. Here, my friends, instead of creating a new tween and then calling the play method on it, okay, we simply start with a star and use the to method. The to uh, method here creates a new tween for us in the background, okay, uh, and it has the duration of two seconds and the x, the destination x property of 420. What it doesn't have is a node property. The node is the star itself. The star becomes the node automatically. We don't have to uh, specify that. And when we use this to syntax, it plays by itself. We don't have to call the play method on it. The advantage is clear, easy, beautiful syntax. This is wonderful. I mean, your grandmother could look at this code and say, oh, well, clearly we're transitioning to an X of 420 over a duration of two seconds. Maybe your grandmother would not be able to do that. Mine would have been able to. She was a sharp woman. In any case, the disadvantage here is that we no longer have access to that tween variable name, and therefore we can't leverage um, methods like the tween.reverse or the tween play, of course, or tween stop, which you can do too, um, and things like this. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, 80% of the time, this second, the shortcut syntax is perfectly fine, I think. Uh, uh, let's run that, make sure it works. There we go. Okay, it does work just like we'd expect. Did I not do that before? I forget. I'm getting old, you know. So, in any case, my friends, those are the two ways uh, to make tween animations, and that's it for this video. I invite you to come back for the next video in which we're going to talk about custom animations. See you then.